Javon Terrence. This is Javon Terrence Boutique. And we're going to show you how to make this Lorraine postcard mask. Um, this is a mask that we started making last week. Um, we got some calls from people asking if, for us, if I was going to make masks and I was standoffish at first because I was still making dresses and fulfilling people's orders online. I got it done and took it in consideration since it is a high demand. I was like, I have cool fabrics, so let's try it. So we're out here. Um, it's a beautiful day out on Broadway, downtown Lorraine. Um, first step is to get your pattern and this is the fabric laid out so you're going to lay out where you want to put your design if it's a design if it's a solid you can cut out a lot of these all at one time but for me in this lorraine design um when you open it up it says lorraine the mask so it's about matching up the square to the lorraine right here on the fabric. So we're gonna get that cut out and it will look like this. And then we have our lining, which makes our filter pouch two pieces. Both materials are 100% cotton because we wanted to keep it as thick as we can as far as like filter and stuff like that uh um so it can be a good made mask um i heard some people were using interfacing but I, interfacing is almost like tissue so we just want to use cotton it's like the lining too so once you get the lining cut out you have two pieces there and we will lay them out all right, so this is one side pin. This is gonna be overlapping. I just pinned one side to show you really quick. Um, once that's pinned, make sure it's even. And we jump on the machine. We're going to stitch this side down first. And then we're going to stitch this. motorcycles outside I did it I just did an effect called kiting which looks crazy and jumble but as you snip the edges you have your lining sewn to the, the base of the mask so after you do that you're gonna go to your ironing board and press down this seam and then flap it over to press it down like that flat. So we're going to fold this to make it open. Try to get them as even as you can. I'm going to make sure that it's around the same size as the sample. So all of our masks are the same size. So I want to bring down this pleat a little bit more. And that looks good. So I'm going to put a pin in the middle to keep my pleat there. And then I'm going to go back to the ironing board to press all these creases. So we got our pleat. We're going to jump back to the machine and sew down the pleats so they don't move once we crease it over. All right, so once we have our stitch to hold the pleats in, you see on the sides there, 
it's kind of our guideline for our stitch for when we fold this in. So we're gonna do that on the, on the uh, ironing board right now. I'm going to fold this over so we can put the elastic through it. I'm gonna fold it right over the stitch line so you can catch the stitch in the same position of the outside stitch and then press this over. So you see a nice press there. Non-press side, press side. Cut all my little threads off so they don't get too crazy. Okay, so in this casing right here, we're gonna put elastic inside here, hold it down and top stitch it down. If you need to pin your elastic, you can. I'll show you that real quick here. Your elastic is going to be 10 and a half inches long. So we're going to put that right into this casing right here, like a sandwich. So that opens up. Push it all the way to the crease of the, um, the press, the crease. We're gonna pin this down. Same on the other side. So we have these casings in. We're gonna stitch them down right on the stitch line. Try not to, not to catch your um, elastic. It can be a little tricky. It's just a straight stitch down. Back stitch at the front. And it's gonna be thick as you're sewing, so it might be loud, but that's normal because you're going through a lot of layers. There's a lot of pleats right here. Once you get that side done, you gotta do a check to see if you did not catch your elastic. So I didn't catch that side, so that's good. So we're gonna do the other side real quick. Snip our threads off so they don't get in the way of our sewing. All right, so next we're going to take the elastic on the wrong side, wrong side, good side, fold it over each other. So you get the loop. We're going to put a pin on one side and then the other side. And we're going to zigzag stitch over our elastic. So you have to change the setting on the machine. The width of your stitch, your zigzag should be between four and three or one fourth of elastic, one fourth inch of elastic. We're gonna go back and forth a couple times to hold the elastic. One side, and then the other side. Then we are going to do a test on the elastic, make sure it can be stretched. All right, so you have a lot of threads because we were sewing with zigzags, so you gotta cut all these little thread tails off. Okay, I don't wanna litter, so I'm gonna try to put this under there. All right, so last step of this mask and this elastic. We don't want this, this is not appealing, so we're gonna pull this into the casing. So you're gonna pull from one side, I'm gonna pull this way.
might take a little bit to get it going, but eventually it'll go into the casing here. All right, so we have those in, but we're still looking a little bit scraggly with the thread, so I'm still gonna snip everything off so we can make this nice. If we have to ship these to people and these are going on your face, you want it to look good. Oh, so online, um, I went on YouTube and I saw a video. It's a um, CDC video on making the mask. So I saw what he was doing, took the measurements. I made mine a little bit bigger to extend more. For people like that are older, like uh, guys that have like bigger faces, so because I found out like the first one I made was kind of like falling right under the chin, so we, I extended the um, the pattern. All right, and this is a full, fully made mask from start to finish. We we'll open it up. It says Lorraine, and that is it. And you can just put it on over your ears.